Yes, guys, welcome back to Footy Consultancy, Team Talk episode four with Ellie and Lauren. And today, obviously, we're going to be talking about the European Super League. Um, unsurprisingly, obviously, hot topic of the day slash week. Um, I mean, we are fuming about it, as mm-hmm. all football fans around the world are. Lauren, give us your thoughts. How are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, well, I'm an Arsenal fan, you're a Chelsea fan. Yeah. So both our clubs are in the middle of this. And I'm just going to say, as an Arsenal fan, the fact we could consider ourselves as even in a Super League is yeah. hilarious. Like, just the arrogance of it, to create it from the teams that have been involved, the 12 clubs, to to think this will go down well with fans, it's just beyond me how they could think this would have been received any other way. Yeah, it's difficult because I think money and power just seem to override everything at the moment all around the world. And I think it's only when the power of the people come together and protest against it, people really start to listen and think, OK, maybe we don't have all the power to, to be able to do this. Um, and it's just been amazing to see all the um, reaction from around the world, like on Twitter and social media. People just like, they're just so, they just don't know how to comprehend it. Um, but it's just, it's just ridiculous. Like it's, it's such an Americanized idea of having, you know, all these teams in one league. They're all paying to be in it and they're not really guaranteed any competition at all. Mm-hmm. Like you win the league and that's it. There's no room for promotion or relegation, which I think is such an exciting thing about football. I think that's, is, if anything, it's the most exciting thing about football. Like you wouldn't have had the beauty of the Leicester City Football Club story, um, you know, the magic of the FA Cup. You wouldn't have any of that mm-hmm. if you're just being bought, pay, if you're just paying into to these leagues. So I think that was the most um, important thing that we all cared about when, you know, when they announced all this. We were like, what? Literally, it's just taking away all the magic of football, and it's just, it's just money. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts now that the six Premier League clubs have stepped away from it? Because I think it was a massive sigh of relief. Obviously, Chelsea were the first ones to pull out, which I feel great about, considering they're my team. But also, at the same time, I think there needs to be re- repercussions for it. Um, so do you think the rest of the, the Big 12 will, will follow suit? I mean, without the English teams involved, it, it's hard to see what's left for a league, mm-hmm. even if, you know, the Spanish teams do... Why do I always end up with Arsenal? Yeah. Even if, you know, the Spanish teams stick out with it and try and pursue something of this format, I really can't see it continuing. Um, for me, yeah, there's a lot of chat about repercussions, people saying, you know, there should be some sort of, like, punitive action taken against the teams that signed up, particularly the British teams, the English teams. But for me, like, I'm not too interested in that. And, I mean, the thing that's really shocked me with all of this is it's been two days. In two days, we've gone from it being announced it's going to be European mm. Super League mm. to everybody who's anybody having their say on it, whether that's <clears throat> pundits, whether that's the Prime Minister, whether that's the FA um, broadcasters coming out and taking a really strong stance, as well as, of course, all the fans that took to the streets, went outside stadiums and protested. And in two days, we've seen this change. Mm. And for me, we haven't seen that sort of change elsewhere in football where arguably it's as important, if not more important, on issues like sexism for us, issues where, you know, women's footballers have been disadvantaged, issues like racism. We haven't seen that sort of really strong verbal communication from the FA, I don't feel. We certainly haven't seen it from the government. And we haven't seen the sort of decisive action they were willing to take with the European Super League, with Boris Johnson saying, you know, we're going to legislate against it. Mm. It shows you that energy when it comes to racism. Exactly. And it shows you what can be done Mm -hmm. if people are willing to make the moves that are needed. And I think that's the thing that's really hit me about the European Super League is, yeah, it's bad. I don't support it. As an Arsenal fan, I think it's laughable Arsenal going to be involved. And it's certainly something that I was disappointed to see my club put their name to. But more than that, it's just reinforced to me how backwards football is because when we look at it the arguments coming out with regards to the European Super League are people going you know this is challenging the value of football this mm-hmm. football is all about winning and losing you know this is really taking apart the fabric of what our game is 
okay, so we're going to apply that to men's football. We're going to have that conversation. Nobody's talking about the economics of it. It is slightly being mentioned how it could undermine the economics of the structure entirely, but no one's getting into the numbers about, okay, this much can be gained, this much could be at risk. But when it comes to women's football, people aren't willing to talk about values. People aren't willing to talk about gender equality. Uh, people, some people are, but on the whole, that's not the conversation. The conversation a lot of times, a lot of times from men, a lot of times from people in boardroom, is all purely economics. It's not economical to invest in women's football. So it's just that disparity, and I think you're just starting to see it more and more now. And as the days, and it has been days, whereas we've been dealing with this for years, <laughs> yeah. as this has progressed yeah. over the last days, I think people are starting to see the hypocrisy in, in all of that conversation. Mm. And they're starting to, I hope question why is the fa so willing to come out and take action against this why is the government so willing to come out and take action when they haven't done it on racism in football they haven't done it when men's clubs have been disbanding women's teams mm. so for me that's what i want to see come next it's not about you six teams you were going to be involved in this and this is the action the action is points deduction the action is whatever i really don't care about that what i care about now is that everybody who went out and protested against the european super league all these people in the boardrooms that have made these decisions, all of these media stars that have come out and condemned these six clubs, mm -hmm. let's, like you say, let's put that energy into racism in football. Mm -hmm. Let's put that energy into what's happening in women's football. We were talking about Birmingham City last week and everything happening with them not being funded right. Mm -hmm. Let's put the energy there. Let's actually, if you care about this game, <clears throat> care about this game in, an, in its entirety and let's actually change football in England for the better. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. I want to see come next. Definitely. I think... Um... You just touched upon it there, Lauren. Patrick Bamford, he mm. hit the nail on the head when he said, you know, everyone seems to suddenly care and, and, and get hurt when, when it comes to money in their pocket. Um, but no one really had the same energy when <clears throat> issues of racism were apparent in football. So um, I think Marco Bielsa said a similar thing about the rich take the rich getting richer by, t by taking and benefiting from the poor. And it's, it's so true. And it's the same throughout all all companies and businesses around the world. I had um, I was speaking to my brothers and, and their friends and they were saying how football is a business. It is a business, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be a business without the fans. Mm -hmm. So I think one reason um, Germany have got it right and they will continue to do it right, obviously they haven't been involved at all in, <clears throat> in the Super League. None of their teams have, have backed it at all. Um, it's because, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe 51% of their board um, have to be fans mm -hmm. so the people that are controlling the the teams and are at the top um, in all the German in the German league it, are, are fans and, and they care about the, the fans and, and the football so I think that's why they've done it right mm. they've always had like the best um, youth academy set up in Europe which is why they're one of the best international teams in the world is because they care and support so much the youngsters, um, the women's teams, and and it's all through to the men's teams as well. They, they, they're at the heart of football, and I think we need to take a leaf out of their book. Mm. I think it's definitely it's useful be. having fans on the board, but I do still think there's the issue of what biases do these fans hold, and maybe not even know they hold, and they might have got the decision right in this instance. But again, if if you have a really diverse makeup of fans on the board, yeah, maybe it can work, but. Sport for me is just a reflection of society and society we care so much about money and issues like racism, sexism, homophobia mm. exist in society and exist in sport. So I just I think it needs to be I think that is a positive step and I do think it is something that should be replicated in England, having them fans on the board. But for me, that's just a tiny bit of a massive puzzle. I think really now within education, with us as individuals, people need to reflect on what biases do they hold? And there'll be people, without a doubt, who have gone out these last few days and protested outside stadiums. Great, use your voice. I think power to the people. Everyone should use their voice and fight for what they believe in. But were you the same person that was maybe sat at home criticising when people were out protesting for Black Lives Matter, saying, oh, you're breaking COVID rules? I bet there's people that are... Mm, conflict. Yeah, yeah, in that space. And you need to look at yourself. And, and myself included, everyone needs to take that time to reflect on themselves and understand, am I applying different standards to different things? And if so, why am I doing that? And let me understand that and let me stop that because that's the only way we're really going to see progress within football, within society, is people taking that time to go away and reflect. Mm. And I like would really urge anyone who's watching this, 
and maybe hasn't got involved in issues like racism in football or homophobia in football or sexism in football uh, because they don't think it's their fight, if you're in that position, you know, really reflect on that. And it's a completely different issue with the European Super League. But the way people have felt so angered by this, the way people, fans have felt disrespected, that's a word that's been used a lot. <clears throat> people have felt it's been unjust. All of them feelings that people have felt in them two days, I can say safely as a woman in society and a woman in football, that is genuinely how I felt for 25 years of my life. I felt like that the decisions the FA makes day in, day out in regards to our game. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there'll be black players, black fans, Asian fans, gay fans, whoever it may be, other people who feel like that day in, day out. And you felt like that for two days about the European Super League. Two days and it's been completely changed. Whereas black footballers have been fighting the fight about racism, sometimes on their own, for years and years and years. And there's still been so little meaningful change. Like, that's the problem. And... Fans on the board, yeah, maybe a great step towards getting more diverse boards. But that, for me, is the key. Let's diversify boardrooms. Let's educate kids. Let's actually change the makeup of what football looks like. Mm -hmm. Then then I think you'll start to see decisions being right more than wrong. And right in the sense of people like you and me, women, people, like black players, black fans, whoever it may be, people who have been for so long on the wrong end of them decisions, that's when we're going to start seeing that positivity. Yeah, yeah. And I, I understand your frustration, obviously. I feel exactly the same. And I think, I'd like, well, I hope that this reaction and the power of the people is going to sort of inspire, um, you know, the, the same fights for, for sexism and racism in, in, in football. So, I mean, again, it's, it seems like we're having the same conversation every mm -hmm. week, like with all these different things happening in football. We're just hoping that it creates a positive effect and it starts making things better for, for everyone mm -hmm. and and these issues just, just get get bigger repercussions, I Definitely. suppose. But um, I think that's a really big positive takeaway is look what fans can do. Like, if you do mobilise, look mm -hmm. at the impact you can have. Yeah. The, the change is multi-million, billion pound change that's been brought about in two days. That's the power you can have. Mm -hmm. Pick what you fight for. Make mm -hmm. sure you're fighting for issues that affect society as a whole and not just yourselves that's that would be my takeaway message yeah I mean well I think we're glad obviously this European Super League is definitely getting debunked mm -hmm. and we hope it's the last of the talks of it and it doesn't go ahead at all um but yeah let us know your thoughts guys do you think those six Premier League teams need to have repercussions at all as a Chelsea fan I obviously don't want that but I think for for things to change mm. needs to happen um, I would say put the energy elsewhere. Uh, well, yeah. Put the energy elsewhere. Both, like. both really, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to get your thoughts on it, definitely. Cool. Still so much discussion to be had, I think. Exactly. So we'll see where we are this time next week. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll have another team talk on the, the European Super League. But otherwise, let us know your thoughts, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment and... See you later. Have a great day. <laughs>